So the thermistor experiment to begin with is um, very similar to the LDR one. Um, we've got uh, our battery, we've got our resistor, I'm going to call that one R1, and we've got the thermistor, and I'm going to call that the resistance of the thermistor. Now we need to remember that a thermistor's temp uh, resistance will decrease with um, an increase in temperature and the design brief has told us that we want this voltage output to uh, increase as the temperature drops. So just to remind ourselves we have a current flowing around the circuit so as the resistance of the thermistor decreases the current will increase. Because the current has increased and this resistance R1 remains the same, that tells us that V R1 multiplied by the current, because R1 is remaining the same as the current has increased, the potential difference across this one will have increased. So, because the EMF is going to be the sum of the potential difference across one, R1 plus the potential difference across the thermistor, this hasn't changed, so as this increases, therefore this one must decrease. So we, what we can see, as the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down, so this voltage goes down, or conversely, the as the temperature goes down, this resistance goes up, the current gets smaller, so this potential difference across here gets smaller. In a similar way to the uh, LDR experiment, we're going to be using the thermistor circuit and we want it to operate over as great a range of potential differences as we can get. So in order to do that, we're going to model the circuit for various values of R1 and you're going to have to calculate what the theoretical range of um, values for the V out over the thermistor will be. So in order to do that, we need to work out what is the resistance of the thermistor at its coldest in ice water and what's the value of the resistance of the thermistor at its warmest when we put it in boiling water. Then you'll need to enter the value of the EMF of the cell or the power supply into here. And once we have those three things along with the varying values of R1, you'll need to enter a formula into this column to calculate the theoretical voltage range across the thermistor. Once that's done we have a tab down here at the bottom called graph and that should plot out the V range against the resistance and from that graph you will be able to see where the V range is at its maximum. So in order to determine the resistance of the thermistor in the hot and the cold water, what we're going to do is set up the multimeter as an ohm meter. So um, as we can see in this picture here, we've got the settings where the dial is pointing to a maximum resistance of 200 ohms and the two connectors of the thermistor just go into the COM and the V ohm connect, uh, connections. And now I place the thermistor in the iced water. I've also got um, a temperature probe just to have a look at the temperature, although it's not essential. And I put it in and I start swirling it around. And then after a few minutes of swirling it around, I look at the ohm meter and I see take its smallest value. And then when we're in the boiling water, I place the thermistor into the kettle. i be a bit careful with this one. I'll make sure when I get there, I'm going to close the lid so I'm going to avoid any splashing of hot water over me. Um, I turn the kettle on. I've cut out a large bit because otherwise that literally would be like watching a kettle boil. And then similarly, as it comes in, now I'm looking to take the reading on the ohm meter where I get the smallest value of the resistance. I'll take those, I'll enter them into my spreadsheet, put the formula in, and then after we've done that, we can then make the prediction of what value of R1 will be needed in order to give the maximum range of 
voltages. <laughs> 